hey guys bang bang so welcome back to the next video in our PySpark series so today we're going to be looking at how to set up your Databricks community community edition so you can work on PySpark for free uh, so let's begin with just uh, very quickly explaining to you what Databricks is so Databricks is basically uh, a cloud-based big data platform right so users have access to clusters and they can work on uh, their big data. So why is this important? So because nowadays data-driven data decision-making has become the key to all business decisions in like large companies and stuff. So companies use uh, this analysis of their big data and turn that into insights to make these decisions. So with this evolution in the importance of data, we've started generating larger and larger volumes of data. And co these companies are in need of a fast reliable, scalable, and easy to use workspace for their ecosystem of uh, data specialists, be it data analysts, data engineers, and data scientists. So this tool, which is built to meet all these requirements is Databricks, which is again, like I said, a cloud-based uh, data tool that is widely used by companies to process and transform large quantities of data and explore the data. So they can do transformation, they can do analysis, and also they can um, create machine learning models and workflows with the large, with the big data that is ingested into Databricks. And now we're gonna be looking at uh, the segment of Databricks that we're uh, gonna set up today, which is the community edition. So it is a free version of uh, Databricks where users can access a micro cluster as well as a cluster manager and a notebook environment. So these uh, users can share their notebooks and host them free of charge with Databricks. And yeah, it's just to let you guys know Databricks Community Edition is hosted on AWS, but you don't incur any costs from AWS or from Databricks to use it. So we can jump right into setting it up. So to set it up, you can go, go on over your, to your browser and just search Databricks Community Edition. You can... Uh, open the main link databricks community edition and yeah so uh, apologies to you guys i'm already logged in with my account but what you should see is something like this and you can just click sign up and then what you can do is basically just uh, fill in all this information right so you have your first name last name email it doesn't have to be a corporate email you just uh, can use your personal email and whatever the need, just click continue. You'll get a, a verification email to your personal ID. Once you verify your email ID, uh, you can then access uh, Databricks Community Edition uh, with the credentials that you had supplied. So I'll just log in for now. So once I've logged in, this is what the, the screen looks like. So we've got notebooks, we've got data import, we've got auto ML, we've got some quick start tutorials, and then we've got uh, transforming of data. Then we've got some documentation, some release notes, and blog posts. So that's just what you see on the main page. But the important thing is on the left, you've got this uh, uh, sidebar menu, which is where uh, the real work happens. So today we'll just be looking at how to set up uh, the compute or the cluster that we're gonna be using with our Databricks Community Edition. So what we can do is we can just click on compute. Once we click on compute, you just press create compute. And then you can create a cluster, which is basically the, the runtime engine or the computation that will be uh, performing the transformations and operations that we give to Databricks. So we need to create a runtime. So we need to create a cluster, just give it a cluster, a cluster name. I'm just gonna call it cluster one. And then for the runtime, yeah, just give it the latest unless you're working on something very specific. But if you're just practicing, just give it the latest. So you have access to all the features that you need and that are available to you. Once that's done, you can click create cluster. Now, if it was uh, uh, a paid Databricks edition that you were using, you'd have a lot more uh, options while creating the cluster. You could scale your RAM, you could scale the processing power based on your requirements you could choose the availability zones and the backups and all that kind of stuff but since this is just the community edition we have sort of a prefixed um, uh, cluster that is given to us which is as you can see 
the driver type is community optimized with 15 gigabytes of uh, ram two cores and a 1 dbu 1 dbu is sort of like the units where they assign to a databricks assigns to measure the compute power of that driver so yeah so you can see that uh, there's a wheel spinning here so that means it's setting up it normally takes especially the first time it takes uh, like a couple of minutes to set up so while we're doing while we're waiting for that to set up we can go over to create and then we can click create notebook right give it a name like notebook one and leave the default language as python since you want to work in pyspark you can leave it as python note that if you uh, set the default language python all these other languages are still available to you but the default will just be python so we'll create the notebook and you, you would have seen there that we can choose the cluster as well and in, and it was automatically chosen as cluster one since that was the only cluster we had created. So now we get we come to our notebook page, and you can see uh, here we've got um, a button which says starting. So that shows us that our cluster one, which is the cluster we had chosen for this notebook, has not yet finished uh, setting up completely. So we just need to wait for that. All right. So now, as you can see, um, we've got cluster one with the green dot next to it that means it's, that means it's ready to go and we can use it right away just to confirm just do something simple like print hello world and we can hit shift enter to run Yeah, so you can see that the cluster is working and we are able to access PySpark. So that's, that's it for this video where we set up a Databricks Community Edition where you guys can work on PySpark for free. So in the next few videos, we'll be diving deep into PySpark starting from the basics but working our way up to some quite complicated concepts. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your reminders to uh, stay updated with all of our releases. Thank you guys.